actually filmed um, the whole video. So there's been like three or four times that that's happened and I just haven't been satisfied with it. So I ended up never uploading them because I just thought I was really trying to rush through things and this is ASMR and I shouldn't be rushing. And also for you guys who actually want to learn, like it took me, you know, playing years of volleyball to get a hang of rotation. Um, although it, it doesn't take a person years to get the hang of it, but I'm saying like I learned it kind of like on the court, like playing it. So it was much easier for me and um, obviously me teaching it to you guys like on a whiteboard. It's going to be a lot harder for you guys to grasp the concept, but I'm going to try my best to, um, to teach you guys rotation um, in this video. So um, I'm not really going to talk about, you know, the basics of volleyball, uh, meaning like I, I hope we all know what volleyball is and how we play. It's on it's six on a net and um, you know there's other distinctions so I think um, if you have any questions like you can comment down below but honestly if you just googled volleyball like you would see many images and things pop up and you would kind of be able to get a sense of what the game is and I think in American culture or even you know European culture we all kind of had to play volleyball in, um, in uh, physical education and things like that so I'm not going to go over you know things like that because I feel like that can get a little repetitive, so um, today I'm just going to focus more on like the um, details, like uh, things that you need to know to really start playing volleyball more seriously. So I have with me my handy dandy whiteboard, and I think I just got this from like Kmart or Office Max. It's just kind of like a cardboard. Also, excuse that I'm wearing a tank top. I just played volleyball. And we're actually number one in the league right now. Yay! So playoffs are actually next week. But yeah, I'm kind of a little warm, so that's why. Since there are six people on the court, um, there are pretty much six rotations, so six different positions. And um, the reason why we have rotation, um, to me, it's to make the game more fair, um, because obviously if you had, um, you know, like for example in basketball, you do kind of have positions, right? And you really always want the center to be the tallest person and he always kind of goes to his spot, right? Um, and there's there's no real regulation on like who can play what spot at what time. You know what I mean? Like obviously we do specialize because taller people are going to be better shooting whereas like maybe people like Steph Curry who are great at dribbling and being a point guard, he's going to be, you know, in that position. So in volleyball it's the same thing. We specialize into different positions. Um, sometimes, usually based on skill, and we rotate because we play on such a small space that if you always had the same person, same three people front row and the same three people back row, it would make the game much more complicated to actually be fair, if that makes sense. Like, I don't really know if that makes sense. So anyways, that's why we have rotation. Don't question it. It's just a rule. You have to go by it. So these, this is like a rule that you have to play by if you're school like a high level volleyball and if you don't follow the correct rotation you can get called out for it and it's actually a penalty point and the other team gets the point so this is very important it's not like a suggestion it's it is really like you know a part of the game that you like a hard fact that you kind of need to know so with like recreational volleyball it doesn't matter but obviously for official volleyball it does matter so um i actually had to look online because i was like in my mind like rotation is such a 
to show you an aerial view so that it's easier. And I'm also going to draw in this thing called the 10 foot line. And you can guess why it's called the 10 foot line because it's exactly 10 feet from the net. And um, that matters because um, when you're playing volleyball, you have three people in the front row and three people in the back row because it's six on six. And you can't change that. Like you, um, if you're in the back row, you cannot hit, sorry, hit while jumping over this 10 foot line. However, if you're in the back row, you can obviously back up. But when you're in the back row, you cannot go in front of this line and jump attack. Okay. So, um, basically like you can walk up to the front, like here and stand down ball. Like as long as you're on the ground, you can still hit the ball over. But the second you jump and if you're, if your jump point is past the 10 foot line, then that's illegal and the other team automatically gets the point. So that's obviously to prevent, you know, a really tall back row player from just running up to the net and hitting every ball anyways. So that's why that, that rule is in place. Okay, so just imagine the rest of the board is the, uh, the border of the court. Okay, so I'm going to mark the regular players in green and I'm going to mark the setter in blue because in rotation, a lot of times the, the main person who needs to know the rotation is the setter. So, if you're thinking of becoming a setter, then pay close attention. Um, I'm a setter, so, yeah. Okay, so, um, there are six different positions, well, yeah, let's say six different positions on the volleyball court, and I'll write them out for you right now, but then I'm just going to abbreviate them. So, the first one is the setter. So, for the setter, we're just going to abbreviate it to S, and then we have the outside hitter. Actually, two of these, so I'm gonna put like times two, and then we have occasionally a middle, which I'm gonna do M, and then we have what's called a libero or a defensive specialist. Um, however, you end up having two middles because one is at the net and the other one is usually off the court, and then you switch at the net, and the libero gets to go in for each middle in the back row, so the libero never rotates to front row, and these middles. Um, only one of them will rotate back to serve and stay in one rotation, and then they switch out for the libero. So we'll talk about that um, in, in the libero rotation, and it'll become more obvious. But for these, I'm just going to do like 081 and OH2. Like, I'm going to subscript it for you guys, okay? So if you want to screenshot this so you have it with you while I'm talking, because I'm just going to be talking in abbreviations from here on out, then that. And I think in my next video, I will expand into what these positions are there are different positions and kind of like the specialization of each position um, because I think most of you guys already know that information and um, if you didn't then um, then you can watch my next video so I'm just gonna grab a napkin so I can wipe this um, so that'll be in the next video but uh, if you're really confused you know don't be yet um, what the rotation is really the hardest thing to learn so that's why I'm gonna go over that first and everything else comes pretty naturally after that so, now we're going to place these people on the court. Okay, so, I'm going to write up here, this is rotation one. Okay, because obviously, like I said, there are six rotations. So, in rotation one, when you are on a offensive rotation, okay, so in volleyball, um, the game is started by the defensive side. So, the game is put into play. Um, when you're on a defensive rotation, um, not an offense. So in this case, the other team would be serving the ball over to us and we would be receiving. So what this is actually called is called serve-receive. I before E except after C. <laughs> I always have to repeat that. So yeah, this is this general, in general, all six rotations are called serve-receive. But you can also call them like offensive rotation, rotation, doesn't really matter. Okay, so, these are where the positions are going to be. I'm going to have a circle where I'm just going to, I'm just going to draw out the, the letters. Okay, so rotation one commonly has two variations. This is the most common variation.
Oh, I also forgot to, sorry, I forgot to mention one more position, and that is called a right side. Okay, and I'm going to abbreviate that R. And that person is always opposite the setter. And it's basically, most teams do um, two setters, so this right side is also a setter, but because they're not the main one setting right now, we're going to use R. Because you can only have one setter per rotation, pretty much. Like, that's the standard. This is commonly how it looks, and if you notice, we are missing one. That one is the setter. Okay, so this is going to be how it looks like on the court. Okay, now, it might look a little funky, and you might think, what is this? Why is there a giant space here? Now, the reason for that is, um, so like I said, there are three people back row and three people front row. So right now, you can see there are only two. So, where's the third person? Well, actually, this person, the outside hitter number one, is in the front row. However, before the game starts, she will, she or he, will drop back here in order to cover the setter. So, now you're asking, why would you need to do that? Why can't the setter pass the first one? Well, if you know anything about volleyball, you would know that the setter is commonly the person running the plays, and they are the one to put up the second ball. They are always almost touching the second ball. And so obviously if you have a setter here and they're passing the first ball, they're not there to touch the second ball because you can't hit the ball twice in a row unless you're blocking, which is another thing we'll talk about. Okay, so that's why um, you always have to have someone who the setter is behind, okay? Now, in rotation, like I said, because it's very strict and you can't go out of rotation, the setter must always make sure.
opposite, like crossed opposite with your counterpart. In defense, you're parallel. Okay, so like I said, the setter always pairs with the right side, the outside one, and outside, outside two. And the libero, right? Okay, so you always want to be on the same parallel. The only time that is different is when your libero and outside hitter want to switch because sometimes liberos play better in this position. So it really is up to your um, coach. But for now, I'm going to keep it easy and I'm just going to keep the libero in the middle because that is pretty common as well. So now, obviously, as you can see, these are crossed. They're still crossed. They're not parallel. So what happens is once the setter puts the ball in play, these people will switch. Okay, so the right side will go here and the outside same in this case, so the outside is already here, so they can just stay here, and the libero is already here, so she stays. And then the setter will kind of sort of run up to about this position and end up staying here. So that's what you have. Okay, so in every other defensive rotation after, you know, in this, basically what you want is you just want to get to your home base, and then you rotate according to where you are on the court. So this is in rotation one. I'm hoping most of you guys are asleep at this point because that just means that it's relaxing. But if not, I hope it's not too confusing. Um, but again, you know, put any questions you have down below. And if it's a really good question that pops up a lot, then I'll address it in the next video. And we're already at 20 minutes and we have like five more rotations left. So I might only go through the first three today. Now we're going to go to rotation two. And again, like I said, we're back in service. Okay, so let's imagine we lost the point, and now it's the other team serve, so they rotate, and it's their turn to serve. Okay, so it's their turn to serve, they serve it over, and then we end up winning the point, and we rotate, and so now we're in, so now we're going to switch, so now we're going to talk about row two defense, sorry, I know this is kind of confusing, this is sometimes confusing for me too. Okay, so now the reason why we want to talk about defense is because usually, like we just did, offense and defense, and then we rotate. So in this case, the outside hitter is the one who's going to start serving, okay? So the outside hitter is down here. She's still the first one, okay? So she's now back row, which means the other outside hitter, number two, is now front row. The middle will always start in the middle, and then people usually will rotate around her. So before the right side was here, now the right side is technically here. So the right side has to be here, to the left of the middle, and the outside, number two, is already in her position. Okay, now the libero is down here, and the setter is here. So again, the outside hitter can serve wherever she wants, so she could start serving from here, um, because then obviously it would be easier for her to move. So I'll put her over here, but it really doesn't matter. So now again in purple lines, I'm going to show you once the ball is put into play, how people move. So once the ball is put into play, she will pop up here, okay, to this position. The right side will then move here, and everyone else is where they're supposed to be. See? By the way, today, um, right when I was taking the bus from NYU, there were um, two fire trucks that were like speeding. Like usually the fire trucks they go pretty fast but they're not like really fast but those fire trucks were going so fast I was scared I was honestly I honestly thought they were gonna hit somebody okay so this rotation is defensive so let's say unfortunately wah wah we lose the point and now we're in rotation two for service receive okay so rotation two service receive now it looks like served so she's gonna start here okay our setter technically is right here but we're gonna hide the setter up here so I'll show you how that looks um, okay so the setter is gonna be up there we have our right side remember our right side was here switching over because she had to be on this side of the middle so the right side is here in the middle um, yeah, let's put the right side here and the middle right here and then the other outside hitter will come back. You always want to try to have three passers. So usually, even though the outside number two is supposed to be in front row, she's going to draw back and pass for the for the serve receive. And the libero, you want to have them in the passing line because they're the 
much easier for me to say one pronoun today. So she has to stay in between them, so that's why I'm right here. But she also cannot be on this side of the right side or in the front, okay? So she has a very small margin of where she has to stay. In front row, right like this. And now, once the ball is put into play on the other side, okay, the setter stays pretty much here, and the right side will switch in front and come here, and the middle will switch in the back and come here and be ready to hit, and the outside again will come up here and be ready to hit. Okay? So you can take a picture of that if you want, or pause it or something, but that's rotation two. Push all the 
guys enjoyed it, even if you are not that into volleyball, or if you are. Um, I hope it was useful information. Um, I hope I wasn't going too fast, but at the same time, I didn't want to go too slow. Um, for those who, you know, kind of already know rotation and just wanted a review. So, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video.